Okay, so, so today uh, I'd like to say a few words about uh, the sign problem in Quantum Monte Carlo, uh, essentially because um, I'm working on it these days and I think it could be useful for the people, most of you, I suppose, don't know about this sign problem. Uh, it's, of course, a very important problem. It is considered as a, one of the most important problems for electronic simulation, electronic calculations, essentially because uh, we have this fixed node kind of calculation which allow to get very accurate uh, uh, total energies, uh, but we are still in a problem because of this fixed node approximation. It's not, not really a problem for the total energies, but a problem as soon as we compute uh, difference of energies because even if the fixed node error are small and you can have uh, uh, non-negligible and important error in the differences. So since uh, quantum chemistry is about differences, it's, uh, it's, it's very important. So in the first, uh, uh, in the first uh, moment, I will, I will explain uh, again diffusion Monte Carlo, uh, essentially because I, I need to uh, put some notation on order to for the following. So we already did uh, so that uh, uh, two times, I think. So I will be not so in detail and I will be uh, quite, quite rapid about that, but it's important. So uh, the first, the key idea, as you know, of uh, quantum Monte Carlo in a general scheme, uh, zero temperature Monte Carlo is to uh, start from some trial wave function, which is some approximation of the ground state uh, um, wave function, such for example, Archifoc or Archifoc times the jazz rule, whatever, and to apply exponential minus th on it in order to get the unknown uh, exact wave function, ground state wave function at large times with some, oh, there is a sign, minus sign missing here, with some uh, very small decaying uh, um, uh, error. Uh, just one remark, which can be interesting for you, is that uh, uh, since exponential minus th can be seen as a sum of power of h, you see that there is a close connection with the Davidson algorithm we use standard, in a standard way in CI calculation, in, in, in the sense that in the Davidson calculation uh, algorithm, you apply the power of h on some uh, starting uh, vector, for example, the r 3 fork uh, 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 vector and, uh, and so we see that in fact it's uh, a kind of generalization of the Davidson algorithm. Okay, so uh, we extract uh, the uh, wave function at that. So if you want to do that, you need to compute a matrix element of this operator and I wrote it here in the space representation because in quantum Monte Carlo, as you know, we work essentially, but not always, but essentially in the space representation. And so you have to uh, essentially compute a one integral, which is a, a tri-wave function times what we call the time-dependent green function, which uh, appear in many, in many theories in particular chemistry. So, uh, but of course, we cannot do and compute this integral because uh, we don't know uh, what is the analytical expression for this time-dependent green function. So the point is how to compute this integral here. So as you know, um, this is done by, act, by uh, simulating the action of exponential minus th stochastically, thanks to two facts. The first is the fact that we know at small time t equal two here, the short time, we know some uh, limit uh, expression for this time dependent green function. Okay, of course, there are a number of formula with more or less uh, accuracy, but okay, I give the simplest one, which is typically what we, we use. Okay, so as you know, it's a product of some, uh, uh, the diffusion uh, kernel, which is a standard, uh, which related to the kinetic energy and some uh, weight, which is related to uh, the potential. Okay, so, and the second uh, property, which is essential here is a composition rule, uh, where we have already see, uh, seen that it's, it's the fact that the time dependent grid function can be uh, decomposed short time by short time, short time by short time along uh, the time interval t, and you just have to integrate over intermediate position. 
Okay, this is the exact mathematical uh, property, which is not related to the fact that exponential minus th can be uh, written as a product of exponential minus 2h. Okay, so you can then rewrite the important quantity we want to compute as a multidimensional integral, which now you know the integral to average. This is a product of the small time green function. And we have an expression for that and times the tri wave function. So it can be computed with ordinary Monte Carlo. Um, in practice, uh, we don't really do that, even if uh, there is a brand of QMC which is called Reptation Monte Carlo, where you really do that in ordinary Monte Carlo. But most of the time, we use a Langevin type uh, simulation where the time-dependent green function, the short time dependent green function, is written as a product of the transition probability, probability of going from x to x prime in a small time tau times the weight. Here, uh, the probability, transition probability, is a standard free Gaussian transition probability, the, 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 the Brownian uh, move, which is given by this kernel here the standard Brownian motion, free Brownian motion, times the weight, and the weight is exponential minus tau, the potential as we see, we have seen just uh, in a previous uh, slide. Okay, that is very, it's really the essence of, of, uh, uh, of Quantum Monte Carlo. It means that using a projector here, knowing that at the large time, we can extract the unknown ground state wave function, and we can express the matrix element of this operator as a product, I'm sorry, as a of the multi-time product of this uh, short time approximation. And you make the integration. So it's really very, very simple. In practice, it doesn't work. Uh, why it doesn't work? It doesn't work because we use to move uh, the what we call the workers, means uh, some, uh, some uh, copy of X in a, in, a, in, a, in a three n dimensional space, these workers move with a free Brownian motion. So it means that they go everywhere in a democratic way, with no special uh, position. Uh, and 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 so, in fact, you sample in a very inefficient way the configuration space, because as we know, because of, of this term here, the exponential minus tau v. Uh, in most of the place, this term is zero, and we have to sample the place where the potential uh, plays an important role, which means lower, uh, small, uh, 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 potential as small as, uh, as okay, negative and important, okay. Uh, so, so what we do, and we already uh, saw that, is to make what we call a similarity, similarity transformation, where we use a tri wave function and multiply the green function by psi t and psi t x prime. So it gives you also a new product of probability times the weight, but this time this probability is very efficient to sample the uh, configuration space. Why? Because uh, it is the same probability transition as a free Brownian motion, but we had here a drift term which is the gradient of psi t over psi t, which by construction push the workers to the region, toward the region of space where psi t is large. And when psi t goes to zero, it's an infinite uh, drift vector which push away the configuration, the workers from the region where the probability is small. So it is very efficient in order as a sampling. And now uh, the, uh, the plus is the fact that now the weight is no longer exponential minus 2v, but exponential minus 2, the local energy. And this local energy, which is defined as the application of h of psi t with psi t, is much less uh, varying in space up to becoming a constant when you take the exact ground state. So it is very efficient in the sense that the sampling is much better and the fluctuation of the weight are much, much smaller. So uh, without entering more in the detail, you have these three steps in the 
in the, uh, in the algorithm, first to make a free diffusion here, to make a deterministic drift move, and then to branch. It means to multiply the workers, the number of workers, by a factor which depends on the position. And the more uh, your local energy is, is negative, the more you multiply the uh, workers. So it means that you are now uh, you are now sampling this weight, uh, and you kill the workers which are uh, not uh, uh, with a, a corresponding weight which is too small. So making these three steps, you solve. You are able to compute this integral. Okay. So I, I have finished here the first part, which is a, a reminder of the the, the, the key ideas of, of DNC. So if there are a question I can take now or everything is clear. Is there any question? No. No? You you hear me or not? Yes. 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 No, no, to be sure that you are still here because uh, <laughs> Would be stupid to speak. <laughs> okay, so now I am. Um, I am now. I will go slowly, more slowly, because it is uh, the main point of, of, of today's presentation. So I'm talking now about what is, in short, the fixed node approximation, and what could would be a, a method, the main method, uh, to uh, remove this uh, approximation and to go to the exact. Uh, 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 electronic energy, uh, with, which would be a, a dream, of course, because it is really an exact energy. I mean, the full CI energy in an infinite basis set, the resolution of the Schrodinger equation, the true one. Uh, okay, so uh, as we know, because psi t is a wave function for a set of electrons, it must be antisymmetric in the exchange of the electrons. So uh, as, a, as a consequence, in space, psi t has to go to zero at some places. Uh, for example, when you, uh, if you take uh, air r1 equal r2, and when one and two are uh, spin-like electrons, uh, the wave function goes to zero. It's, it's zero exactly by anti-symmetry. Uh, the point, uh, it's an important point, is that uh, Unfortunately, uh, exchange uh, nodes are not full nodes. Uh, there are just a, a sub variety uh, with co-dimension six or three, uh, and they don't determine the, the nodes. So there are other nodes which are not due to the exchange and which are related to the potential. So uh, we don't know these nodes, and that is a problem. Okay, this is a tough node to, to find. Okay, so now, in when when uh, the tri wave function is zero, you see that the grief vector becomes infinite. I said before that uh, the grief vector is here to push away the workers uh, close to the in the region where psi t is, is is small. So as a consequences, when you uh, run this algorithm, the workers cannot escape from the region of constant size for psi t. So you have to visualize uh, the entire configuration space with cut by the nodal surfaces. So you have pocket, nodal pockets of constant sign, plus, minus, plus, minus. And if you start a worker in the uh, nodal, nodal pocket, you stay in the nodal pocket. OK? So, so we really solve the Schrodinger equation H psi equal psi, with, but with a new boundary condition, which is that uh, the exact, the wave function, the ground state wave function phi zero you get is not the exact one, but is the exact, is a ground state of H with some additional boundary condition, namely that this uh, wave function is equal to zero in all the places where psi t equals zero. So you solve the Schrodinger equation with the boundary condition, the additional boundary condition, that uh, your uh, wave function must vanish where psi t vanish. 
And then since the nodes, we saw that the nodes of psi t are not exact. Usually if you take R3 fork or this relief wave function, they are not exact. The anti-symmetry nodes are exact, but not the remaining ones, which are essentially the, 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 the full nodal surface because it's uh, dimension three n minus one where n is the number of electrons and the anti-symmetric nodes are three n minus three. So it's just, uh, a, a set of zero measure nodes in the in, in configuration space. So this is a fixed node approximation. Fixed node approximation, you just do what I said before. You move the electrons. They cannot go away the nodal pockets. You drift, you branch, and you uh, get the solution with some statistical nodes. Now, uh, some important uh, points about Tami statistics and what is the problem here in QNC. It's important because this is really uh, the, 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 the fundamental point for, for the problem we discuss here. And this is not well known. I, I would just insist on that. Usually it's not well known in, in quantum chemistry because this is some point which do, do not play uh, a role standard methods. So we have to solve now the exact Schrodinger equation with no uh, additional boundary conditions, no uh, vanishing of the wave function at the nodes of uh, the trial wave function. So what is important is to realize, as you probably know, that uh, the wave function, the ground state wave function we search is not in fact, the lowest uh, state of lower energy of the Hamiltonian. It is, of course, the uh, state of low energy in the space of anti-symmetric uh, wave function, but not in the space of all wave function. Okay, so, and these states, unfortunately, play a critical role in QMC what we call the bosonic states, okay? So bosonic states are solutions of the Schrodinger equation for um, states who have not uh, specific, are not anti-symmetric, okay? They play a critical role in QMC and not, not at all in CI calculation. So we never talk about this. We'll see why later. Uh, in particular, uh, we have to uh, note that the ground state of the Schrodinger Hamiltonian, I mean, the state uh, which has a lower, uh, lowest energy is called here phi zero uh, B, B for bosonic, is a state which has a constant sign everywhere and a bosonic energy, which is much which is smaller than the fermionic ground state. So, up, up, I mean, from now on, I will uh, put a F, a superscript F on the E0 for the uh, fermionic energy, which means energy we want to compute. And I'll put a B for bosonic uh, for the ground state, bosonic ground state, which has a constant sign. Okay, of course, the fermionic uh, state, as we see, as we saw, as a, a non-constant sign, of course. Um, okay, so let's just uh, visualize what is in uh, for atomic system, this bosonic and fermionic system. Uh, the, let's take, take, for example, the beryllium case, atom, the beryllium atom. The fermionic energy is a standard energy you want to compute, and uh, it's main feature is a, let's say, a fork level is we put two electrons in a 1s and two electrons in a 2s, okay? But now, if you remove this condition of anti-symmetry, you have another uh, ground, low, uh, ground state of lower energy, which is a bosonic one, which would consist, for example, in putting the four electrons in 1s. So you can now uh, imagine that the energy of these states is much smaller than the energy of these states, essentially because uh, the 1s core uh, 
orbital, atomic orbital has, a, uh, of course, uh, a big energy because it's close to the nucleus and scale uh, as uh, the essentially uh, Z, uh, the nuclear uh, charge. Okay, so, so now how we are going to make this uh, going beyond the fixed node approximation, which means, which we can call a release node, uh, in the sense that we are going now to remove this constraint of uh, of having this uh, uh, infinite repulsive uh, nodal surface for the workers. So for that, there is no uh, other possibility than to take a tri what we called for the moment a tri-wave function without node. In order to be sure that the drift will never diverge, and so the workers will go everywhere in the configuration space. Okay, so in fact, uh, in order to uh, not to confuse, it is usual to now to introduce two approximate wave functions. The first one is a nodeless wave function, which will be used to guide the electrons. We call psi g, psi g, g for guiding, and of course it is a positive, strictly positive at finite distances. And of course, it goes to zero at infinite uh, distances. So, and psi t, which is our usual Fermi trial wave function. Okay, so now uh, we are exactly doing the same as before, uh, but instead of using psi t here, we use psi g. And uh, so now psi g will remain positive. Okay, no divergence. So this, of course, can be written in the same way as a product of a transition probability with a drift vector, which is now given uh, by uh, the gradient of psi g over psi g times a weight. Okay, this is exactly uh, the same. Okay, and now we want to compute using this uh, probability transition what we uh, wanted to compute before, it's exactly the same. We want to compute this, psi t, tri-wave function fermionic one, applying psi exponential minus th and converging to the fermionic one state. Okay, the important thing to realize is that uh, when you make, uh, you decompose uh, this operator on his uh, Hagen spectrum, uh, you, of course, get an expansion uh, over the uh, 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 excited states. And this expansion here is a sum of uh, all the eigenstates of H, including the bosonic ones, because they are bosonic and they are, they are part of the, uh, of, the, of the Eigen spectrum. And you have the overlap of psi t with the bosonic one state here. Uh, I should have written in the other way to be because this is a projector, would be. And times exponential minus t, and the difference between the bosonic energy minus a constant. And up to the, in, a, in the spectrum, you would have the fermionic, I should have put a f here. Oh, f here and f here, there is an error, f. Okay, and b here. So what happens here is that, of course, all the matrix elements, I should also have put the, I here. So all excited bosonic excited state and ground state here as or, are orthogonal by anti-symmetry uh, to psi t. So all these bosonic terms disappear and we just have the leading uh, term which is a ground state fermionic state and what we said at the beginning of this talk this presentation is okay. Okay. So what I say here is that in a, in a initial wave function series like uh, uh, CI, uh, et cetera, these matrix elements are in fact computed exactly when you make your Davidson algorithm, of course, up to the floating point accuracy. So you never uh, see this bosonic uh, contribution. And I say here, this is why we never heard about bosonic components in computational chemistry in standard uh, methods. However, in uh, QNC, quantum Monte Carlo, uh, because these matrix elements are not computed exactly, but are computed with a statistical method and so a statistical error, noise, this, these terms, this contribution have a dramatic effect. So now just illustrate what is the dramatic effect. 
And I will do that in a very schematic way because I don't want to, to take too much time. But uh, essentially, we can see uh, easily this uh, as, 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 as follows. We said that the Monte Carlo uh, average, so we are computing these matrix elements. And uh, we, in order to have the similarity transformation, I've write it like that. So psi g divided by psi g makes one. Here it makes psi t, so it's just a rewriting. And this here is, as we saw, the, the transition probability times the weight, now with a non completely positive, non zero uh, guiding function. Okay? And so what happens essentially is this quantity psi t over psi g. So in the fixed node approximation, uh, essentially psi uh, g is equal to psi t in each nodal pocket of constant sign. So this is one. Now, if you want to get uh, exact answer without having uh, a guiding with uh, nodes, uh, this will be essentially psi g typically we take the absolute value of psi t. So here it should be a psi t, I made an error, psi t squared plus some epsilon in order to have all, to be sure that this quantity is always positive, which is what we want to the uh, ground state uh, of psi g. So essentially this quantity is a sign of the trial wave function. Okay, so now we have exactly the same uh, simulation as in the fixed node, except that now because psi g is not zero, you can go through uh, the nodes, essentially because you have a, a small tunnel in, in, in near zero in order to go from one nodal pocket to the other nodal pockets. So that is a new thing. And since you are moving from one nodal pocket to another one, you have a sign which now is going into the average, sign of psi t. Okay, and now what is the statistical, what is the impact of that kind of things on the statistical error for the average? As you know, in a Monte Carlo calculation, the statistical error on some quantity here, it would be the, the wave function, is the variance, is a, is a square root of the variance of the estimator of the quantity you average over square root of n, where n here is the number of Monte Carlo uh, drawings, okay? So now, uh, in, a, in our average here, the variance is the square of this quantity. And the problem with the square is that the sine square is equal to one, it disappears. It's no longer be uh, plus and minus, which is not the case for the average. When you make the average, so here I made the squared of the integral minus uh, average of the squared minus average squared. Uh, we know that it is a variance. So because you have the sine for the average, uh, uh, Okay, here should be a minus minus sign. So you go as minus t when t is large with a fermionic ground state. And now because you square the sign, you have no longer a sign, and now the overlap is non-zero with the ground, bosonic ground state. So you have a minus t here is zero bosonic energy. And now when you look at uh, the uh, fluctuation, you now have, uh, 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 because of the squared, you have an exponential t times the difference between the fermionic ground state and the bosonic ground state. Okay, and delta here is, uh, is a positive. So you see this bosonic fermionic gap enters the game in QMC because of the fluctuation. Okay, if you have no fluctuation, this will just uh, be out. Okay. So now you see that the variance is, is, is exploding in time, okay? So in short, uh, the sign problem of fermionic simulation is the fact that the sign of the fermionic variation disappears for the variance. And due the fermionic projection for statistical fluctuation is suppressed and you have a bosonic behavior of the statistical fluctuation. So all the properties to compute behave as I brought as exponential minus t, this is plus here, t delta positive the square root of n. And of course, the Monte Carlo statistic you need is uh, exponential t delta. 
which is of course so uh, so let's say uh, the big problem with molecules this is not necessarily the case for quantum liquids for example the celebrated results of uh, Sepperle Alder of uh, 1980 uh, which is at the root of the uh, fit of the coalition energy of the uniform electron gas and which is used in all DFT uh, for, the for the basic approximation. Uh, the gap between the bosonic and the fermionic is sufficiently small to make the calculation uh, possible, okay? Uh, and this is why, why, because this is very uniform. There is no big attractive center like in molecules. However, in molecules, uh, this is the opposite case, and this gap increases very rapidly as a function of number of electrons. Uh, indeed, as I said before, you, you can compare the standard energy uh, we want to compute the quantum energy with the energy corresponding to all electrons in the 1s core orbitals. If you take a protein or any kind of big system, all the electrons in 1s would be uh, give you a terrific uh, uh, bosonic energy and with a big gap here. So, uh, in the same problem for atoms and molecules, we are in a, in a situation where we have, in order to get something, we need to fight uh, between uh, T increasing in order to project and fluctuation exploding as an exponential. So, um, it's a, a situation where the signal of uh, the noise uh, goes to zero or the other way. I don't know. <laughs> okay, um, that's that's the main idea of the same problem. So just one 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 uh, example because I'm playing with that today at these times on the beryllium atom. So here I show you uh, the curve as a function of t for the beryllium atom for the ground state, starting from the fixed node energy here. You see the exact uh, energy is here and you see uh, the curve as a function of t it goes to 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 he wants to go to the exact energy but you have here this increase large increase of of fluctuation and when you go beyond it uh, become just infeasible because uh, simulation uh, the number of workers explode uh, to get uh, okay so uh, that's it. Uh, I took uh, one half hour. I think I hope it's not too, too. It was not too long. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Michel.